everybody Dirkie here with another pixel perfect video for you guys so this is the second video in this series and we're gonna do some actual drawing now like I said last time I'm using Photoshop you probably don't have Photoshop so you should get a different tool now there are a ton of diff 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 well, different drawing tools out there um, the one well one of the programs I hear a lot of good things about is GIMP it's free and it can basically do, I'd say about 80 to 90% of what Photoshop does. Um, like on the drawing level, Photoshop has a lot of features that are probably not included because that's what Photoshop does. But we're not gonna need those for pixel art, but you should be totally fine getting GIMP. Um, when you get a different drawing tool, so of course the buttons are gonna be a little bit different, but you should be able to, like with a quick Google search, um, get what you wanna do. Now, if you're gonna draw in Photoshop, it is key to use the pencil tool instead of the brush tool. If you right click the brush tool, which is selected by or in there by default, you can select the pencil tool. And the difference between those is that the brush tool has a nice fade because it's a brush, but the pencil tool has a very sharp edge and there is no fade. Now this is key when you wanna make pixel art because you want to be in control of the pixels that you draw. Now the same thing applies for the eraser, except for the fact that it's a drop down instead of a button that you can change. Now the thing you also want to take into account, and this applies for Photoshop, but also other tools. So if you have tools that have an anti-aliasing setting, make sure that it's turned off. Now with the sphere or eclipse, it's very easy to show you the difference. So I have anti-aliasing turned off for this one. As you can see, everything is very nice and crisp. But if I turn it on and I draw a sphere of around the same size, you can see that it's fading the edges to make it look rounder. That's what anti-aliasing does. It blends the edges to make the colors from one side blend into the colors from the other side so that it looks smoother. Because you can all, I think we can all agree that this looks jagged and this one looks very smooth. Now that applies to other programs as well. If you're gonna do pixel art, like at first the key is to always turn off anti-aliasing and there are definitely occasions where you may use it. I'm not saying you can never use it, but for, for starting, just turn it off and don't touch it for now. Now, if you have GIMP, um, I, th I don't think there is a pencil or a brush tool I think you have like a hardness and opacity slider. If you put those all to 100%, you should still be able to get very hard, crisp edges in contrast to Photoshop where that's not a thing with the brush tool. If this is too vague, please Google it or watch a very basic GIMP video or video appropriate for the software that you are using because I don't have experience with all of those tools. After you've watched that, let's go back into drawing basic stuff. And I think the most basic thing that we're gonna be able to draw is a cube. Because if you can draw a cube, you can draw furniture. Because a lot of furniture in everyday life is made of cubes. If you're talking about a chair, it has long cubes, then a cube on top, and then a cube for the back, and probably some cubes in front, and then you got a chair. And this is the ugliest chair I've ever drawn, trust me. But my point is, if you can draw a proper cube, you can expand that into a whole bunch of stuff. Now, in the last video, we mentioned, I say we, it's really weird to, to mention myself in we. Um, I sound like Gollum from Lord of the Rings. But what I was trying to say was, we are, we are gonna draw a two by one step. And what I mean by that is you draw two pixels horizontally or vertically and then jump in either of the other directions with one up or one down or one left or one right and then do the same thing so we could have a consistent line that does two horizontally in this case and then one up i can draw the same thing on the other side or you can just copy your layer uh, is there a copy option by hand duplicate layer there we go 
and then I'm gonna flip it. Now I do this in Photoshop by holding Control T and then flip horizontally. If you have a different program, I don't know what the shortcut is, I'm sorry. Um, and I'm gonna merge the layers. So we, we're, they're all back on, uh, on one layer and I can have con complete control over the lines that we've just drawn. Now a shortcut for copying in Photoshop is if you hold Alt and drag, it creates a new layer for you and you don't have to do the manual copy, just do it for you. And we're gonna move this up about a decent size for a cube. It doesn't have to be perfect. I, you can even do like a, a very flat one, but uh, this is just up to you. And I'm gonna copy it again and I'm gonna rotate it 180 degrees. I could also have flipped it because it's the same size. It doesn't really matter. Um, but when you start rotating and scaling things, make sure that your interpolation settings in Photoshop make sense. Now I'm using bilinear. If I enter, it's gonna look just fine. But if I use, let's say, by cubic and I rotate, hit enter, that's still fine. That's fine when it doesn't work. Should have done this beforehand. And actually it's all working fine. I'm kind of curious about why. Yeah. Funny. I thought some of them wouldn't work. Thing is, sometimes it doesn't work. This isn't the best example, but um, just trust me on that. And make sure you find one that works, because otherwise you get faded pixels as if you would put, do it like that. Um, and that's not what you want. You want it to be crisp, so we have a nice crisp outline. In other tools, it's probably called different, but you should, they probably have something similar. I'm gonna merge these layers again, and I'm gonna draw a line between the edges. And that gives us a bare bones basic cube. Um, and I think that's good enough for now. Let's do some coloring. Now, in Project Zomboid, there isn't usually ever a black outline, but it's easy, it makes it a lot, e a lot easier to start out with a black outline so you have a basic understanding of how your object's gonna look and then color in, well, just just like a kid, color between the lines. And then in this case, we're also gonna color the lines afterwards. Now in Project Zomboid, the lighting comes, and let's do this on a different layer. Um, of course, this from this side, and the sun is in the sky, right? Because I, I think we can all agree with that. So the sun should be around here, which is a bit hard to draw on a 2D perspective or 2D plane. And because of that, this should be the most lit surface because the sun is hitting that the most. This side is still getting some light, but not as much as the top one. And then the third side that we can see is actually in the shadows. That's the one that's going to be the darkest. So I'm going to hide that layer for now, go back to my outline. And I'm just going to fill these in with a color. So I'm going to use the medium neutral gray color for... Um, my cube. Now the thing I just did was turn on contiguous. Contiguous. English is not my first language, bear with me. If you have it turned off, it's gonna fill in everything that matches the description of the pixel that you're trying to fill. Um, if you turn it on, it only does that until it's blocked by different color pixels. So that's the thing we're looking for. Now for the top, it should be a little bit lighter. So we're gonna hit that with a lighter color. And then this one should be darker. So we can hold Alt and click this, or we can just freely select a different color and draw that in with the pencil tool. With So it's a sharp line. And then fill that in with the darker color. And that gives us a basic, basic shading, very basic shading for a cube. So far so good. Um, if you watch my videos, which I hope you guys do because you're here, uh, I always recommend um, watching through it first so you know what's going to happen and you can kind of get the feel for it and then practicing it afterwards. So if you're going to stop and pause and try to draw along, you're probably going to end up missing stuff or you're going to be annoyed uh, if you run into an issue. So I, I'd recommend watching it first and then going back and actually getting, uh, you know, playing along playing ball and, uh, you know, drawing with me. So, okay, let's do 
some basic, some really basic shading on this cube to get it look a little bit more like Project Zomboid, a little bit nicer. And like I just mentioned, Project Zomboid doesn't have black outlines. So we should get rid of those. And the way this cube is formed is that this edge in front, or actually in the middle, is pretty long, which makes this look like a soft edge. Not talking about the colors, just talking about the line here. So if I were to do this on both sides to make it a little bit shorter, it would be a lot harder on the edge. You can see that because of the outline, it's, it's the same size as the other ones. But I kind of like the, the rounded look. So we're gonna play with that. But having this edge look rounded means that this edge should also be rounded instead of being a straight line. So I'm gonna take off the border there. So we also get that longer edge around those sides to make it look like a rounded cube. Now to get rid of these colors and with the lighting in mind that it's coming from that direction, it means that this edge should be getting a lot of light, but not as much as the top and not as much as the bottom. So we're gonna pick a color that's in between the two. So if I hold Alt and click on these colors, you can see my little selection on the left jumping in between. I can do a rough estimate of what's in the middle. Is this the cleanest way of doing it? 100% not. If you wanna have a perfect in-between color, I suggest selecting either of the two colors, making it that color, Ooh. selecting the other one, putting that on 50% opacity, and then drawing over that so you get that 50% look. Then don't forget to turn it back on again. Is this worth it? Sometimes. It, it really depends on your preferences and how strict you wanna be with your colors. Now, when I'm doing things, I like to keep my colors around, well, if they're gonna be slightly off, like slightly, oh, that's actually a pretty big difference, slightly off, like that, that's not gonna be noticeable a lot. So then I'd rather have the same color I can edit in later, I can edit the little differences in later, it makes it a lot easier to work with cleaner colors that are closer to one another so you get a better feel for how your objects and all look. Because of that, the difference between this color and this color should be around the color on this side. Because this was the you know the neutral color that we picked. And this was let's say 50% lighter from that towards pure white. And this should be about 50% darker towards pure black. That means that this color should be around the middle color. So that's why I'm gonna fill this in with that color. Now in Photoshop, you can hold sh or you can hold shift and then click from your last drawing point to create a straight line. Um, you can use that to your advantage to create these lines in one go and it takes a little bit of practice, but you should be getting the hang of that rather quick if you do it a lot where you can select one point and then select the other outest point and do it like that. And I think inner to inner should work as well. Um, if you do outer point to inner point, it sometimes fucks up, but that's just playing with, uh, you know, getting the hang of things and playing with it. Do we want the bottom to be slightly at an angle as well? Let's, uh, let's go with it. So it's, it's a, sh a slight drop off and also it's gonna create, okay, let's let's rephrase that. In 3D animations and 3D games, you have usually have a setting which, which means ambient occlusion. What does ambient occlusion do? Well, in the game, it's creating a little dark corner or edge in corners so that it grounds the objects and it looks more natural. In real life, you don't actually always have ambient occlusion, but in video games, in 3D games, it looks very off if you don't have it. And this is kind of the pixel art way to, to fake that the object's grounded, because if you don't have this line or any shadows, it's gonna look like it's floating, and this is a good way to avoid that. Now for these corners, I think 
let's pretend the light's actually coming slightly more from that side compared to this side. So we can actually do a little bit of a lighter edge here instead of the darker one. And we're gonna change the background to a reddish color. You don't have to pick red, I'm just doing another color so I actually see what I'm doing. And then this color should be darker again. So we're gonna use that for the drop off to do it like that. Now we have a very basic, but it's starting to look like a properly, sh sorry, shaded little cube. And I think we're gonna leave it at that. I'd suggest you draw a couple of these cubes, probably in varying lengths, to get the hang of this. And then in future videos, we will do detailing this cube, getting it to look a little bit nicer, a little bit more like a Project Zomboid cube, and then getting it into the editor to compare it to other objects. Now, as always, I thank you guys for watching my videos. Uh, if you like these videos, consider liking and subscribing. Um, I have a Patreon if you want to support me making these videos, I really appreciate it. And uh, I want to say thank you for the people that do. And I hope you all have a very, very nice day.